Good morning folks, a very warm welcome to you. I hope that you have a good week as we start a new week this Monday, uh, depending on what shifts you work across. But uh, we have another Bible reading challenge today for a bit of encouragement. We're looking at the Gospel of Mark and today we've reached chapter 7. And um, we have so some interesting things in here where Jesus really is talking about what makes somebody unclean. Is it what they do or what comes out of their heart? Um, and what triggers it is the whole issue of hand washing. Of course, that's something that's quite pertinent at the minute when we think about hygiene and uh, the pandemic and, and lockdown, about washing our hands regularly. Um, just, just what's going on here. Let's have a look at Math Mark chapter uh, 7 from the beginning. Some Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples were eating their food with hands that were ritually unclean. That is, they had not washed them in the way that the Pharisees said people should. But the Pharisees, as well as the rest of the Jews, followed the teaching they received from their ancestors. They did not eat unless they washed their hands in the proper way. Nor do they eat anything that comes from the market unless they wash it first. And they follow many other rules which they have received, such as the proper way to wash cups, pots, copper bowls and beds. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why is it that your disciples do not follow the teaching handed down by our ancestors, but instead eat with ritually unclean hands? Jesus answered them, How right Isaiah was when he prophesied about you. You are hypocrites, just as he wrote, these people say God honor, says, says God, honor me with their words, but their hearts is really far away from me. It is no use for them to worship me, because they teach human rules as though they were my laws. You put aside God's command and obey human teachings. And Jesus continued, You have a clever way of rejecting God's law in order to uphold your own teaching. For Moses commanded, Respect your father and your mother, and if you curse your father or your mother, you are to be put to death. But you teach that if people have something they could use to help their father and mother, but say, this is korban, which means it belongs to God, they are excused from helping their father or mother. In this way, the teaching you pass on to others cancels out the word of God, and there are many other things like this that you do. Then Jesus called the crowd to him once more and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing that goes into you from the outside which can make you ritually unclean. Rather, it is what comes out of you that makes you unclean. When, I left the when he left the crowd and went into the house, his disciples asked him to explain this, saying, You are no more intelligent than the others, Jesus said to them. Don't you understand? Nothing that goes into you from the outside can really make you unclean, because it does not go into your heart, but into your stomach, and then goes on out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared that all foods are fit to be eaten. And he went on to say, It is what comes out of you that makes you unclean, for from the inside, from your heart, come the evil ideas which lead you to commit immoral things, to rob, kill, Commit adultery, be greedy, and do all sorts of evil things. Deceit, indecency, jealousy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from inside you and make you unclean. Then Jesus left and went away to the territory near the city of Tyre. He went into a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, but he could not stay hidden. A woman whose daughter had an evil spirit in her heard about Jesus and came to him at once and fell at his feet. The woman was a Gentile, born in the region of Phoenicia in Syria. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her, de her daughter. But Jesus answered, Let us first feed the children. It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Sir, she answered, Even the dogs under the table eat the children's leftovers. So Jesus said to her, because of that answer, go back home and you will find that that demon has gone out of your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed. The demon had indeed gone out of her. Jesus then left the neighborhood of Tyre 
and went on through Sidon to Lake Galilee, going by way of the territory of the Ten Towns. Some people brought him a man who was deaf and could hardly speak, and they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. So Jesus took him off alone, away from the crowd, put his fingers in the man's ears, spat, and touched the man's tongue. Then Jesus looked up to heaven, gave a deep groan, and said to the man, Ephaphtha, which means open up. At once the man was able to hear. His speech impediment was removed, and he began to talk without any trouble. Then Jesus ordered the people not to speak of it to anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, not to, the more they did it. They told it. And all who heard were completely amazed. How well he does everything, they exclaimed. He even causes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Amen. So it's a little bit of a longer passage again today. But we have some really interesting things in here, particularly about what makes somebody ritually unclean. And I just want to draw that particular distinction about uh, what was about ritual and tradition um, also in distinction from that to what was God's actual law um, and also things that make you physically unclean as well so you know, if you eat food that hasn't been cooked properly we know fine well there's, there's a risk to your health um, so too if you don't mind me saying it excrement it has to be taken care of very carefully because similarly that can be a risk to your health these things are unclean they're dirty um, and, and they can cause a problem and we know during our pandemic washing your hands thoroughly to make sure there's no virus on them um, has been a, an important part of keeping ourselves safe as it is with any kind of health issue really particularly to do with um, transmittable disease and um, but Jesus isn't talking about that the Pharisees had a tradition, you know, a ritual, that they would wash their hands right up to the elbow. And, and that was their ritual. It had been passed on by their forefathers as a tradition about how they ought to wash their hands. They knew they ought to wash their hands. How they went about it, they had certain rituals about it. They would have water set aside at the, at the side of the house uh, on the way in through the door. So you could ritually watch it, wash yourself. And you might remember... Uh, from way back when we were looking at the other Gospels and looked at uh, the wedding at Cana. The water jars that Jesus turned into wine, we're told, were waters that were there for the ritual, ritual cleansing. There were large water jars that were taken several gallons in each and were there so that people could wash their hands right up to the elbows to be ritually clean before then partaking of food and eating. And it's no bad thing. Jesus wasn't castigating them for... Um, for cleaning themselves properly, they were castigating him because he wasn't doing, uh, and his disciples weren't doing things to the, the nth degree that their own ritual demanded. I've no doubt, because there certainly wasn't a complaint here, that Jesus and his disciples were washing their hands. But they weren't washing them in the way prescribed. And that's the accusation that's made here. Jesus uses this as an op opportunity to make an object lesson. The object lesson is very much about what gen, what really makes somebody unclean. If all the, the filthy practices and thoughts and ideas that, that come out from our heart um, are, are what are seen uh, and, and seem to indicate that, that somebody just isn't quite right and are effectively unclean, then where do they come from? And Jesus indicates it comes from the heart. You know, if, if your motives are wrong, if it comes from the heart, so your conscience hasn't stopped you doing something, really there is something quite wrong about that. And, and so here Jesus is talking about something quite different from hand washing. He's talking about something quite different from all the other rituals people had about keeping themselves clean and keeping themselves apart from people who might be unclean. Um, and, and he really goes down into some detail with that in, uh, in respects of, what people's attitudes are, their heart attitudes are. And there's another object lesson that follows on from that, really, because Gentiles were viewed as unclean. And he has an encounter. And I have no doubt that uh, the reason that Mark put these stories together, whether they were chronologically true or not, is kind of irrelevant, because that's not how they wrote histories back then. Back then they wrote histories that were thematic. And so there's no doubt in my mind, certainly, um, that the reason that the next story we hear is about this Phoenician woman, this Gentile woman, who wants her daughter to be healed, is because, again, from the Pharisee's point of view, going anywhere near this Phoenician woman would have been something to cause someone to be ritually unclean. But what does Jesus do? He heals her. 
and after an exclamation of faith, some, some very clever words from herself, um, she's probably lived with Jewish people um, of, of these, these particular traditions maybe all her life. She's familiar with the way they view things and she, she's got a clever answer for him. Um, and, and Jesus accepts that. He accepts that she's thought about it. He accepts that she's got faith and she really wants him to do something about it. And he does. And it, it doesn't seem to, to matter whether that makes um, other people think that there's some kind of ritual uncleanness going on here. He goes ahead and he does it. So there's a, there's a delight in that as well. And then last but not least, there's this uh, man who's deaf and mute and he heals him too. Which brings out this exclamation from, pe from people. How well he does everything. He even causes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. I don't know about you, when you think about what's what's unclean, what, what things might be dirty versus untidy, when you think about um, how people look as compared to what their heart motivation is, um, there's, there's a lot to be thought of in, in that respect. But there are people in this life that people look down their noses at, and yet they have such good hearts, salt of the earth, you might say. You know, why would they look down on another, another human being who, because of circumstance, doesn't find themselves as well off as somebody else and, and finds all the other things that accompany that? But why would they look down on them without actually first seeing that you know, they have a love for their family, perhaps, perhaps um, and, and the way that they, they view life, the way they view one another, the way they care for people around them is really the first and foremost thing. So we're seeing something very much here about Jesus' priorities. And very much the intent of the heart is something that comes far higher on the scale than how somebody looks, or even what they're doing, for that matter. Although certain actions come from the motives of the heart, um, it, it's not so much then that Jesus is really getting at, just as he's not getting at hand washing. He's getting at what our, 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 um, our inclinations are our heart influences and the way that we affect other people around us. I think that really is a really incredibly practical lesson for us today as, as we go through today and throughout this week. What are our attitudes to other people? What, what is it that's our motive for the way that we act or the way that we talk or the way that we look at other people, maybe prejudge other people as well? There's, there's something quite practical for us to think on there and uh, I hope that I and you will We'll take the time to do just that. But with these lovely thoughts in mind, let's have a wee word of prayer, shall we? And continue with our day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you at all times for your many blessings to us, for a new day and a new week. We pray that you would bless us in all that we attempt to do. And we pray too that our hearts would be rightly inclined towards Christ and towards one another. And that in, in doing so, that the actions that come forth from hearts that are inclined correctly towards you and towards one another in love uh, would be actions which are acceptable to you. Very often we make mistakes, Lord. Very often our motives aren't as good as they ought to be. Forgive us, please, when they're not. Help us to see the error of our ways and mend our ways. Help us that at all times our attitude might be right, that we might never prejudge others and look down upon them, but rather that we would see beyond the, the outward appearances of, of action and, and sight, and we would actually come to love all individuals and help them as, as and when we're able to, uh, loving our neighbour as ourselves. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us in this. We acknowledge we need that help. Go before us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I trust you continue with us as we, we look at uh, further chapters. We're going to go to chapter 8 tomorrow. Until then, God bless. Take care. Bye for now.